Hello, <laughs> and welcome back. I'm Frank. And I'm Elsie. And this is, is Live or Die. So, today. Today. I'm doing good. I'm having a good day. So you asked yourself? I did, yeah. It's about me. <laughs> no, I love that for you. How are you? Well, I am actually doing wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, you know, woke up today, so that's a win. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> We're alive. Yes, that's always a win, you know. Uh, yeah, had a had a rough night. What? <laughs> was it the kids? It was the kids, yes. I'm How'd not you know? Surprised, yeah. they're rough. All my rough nights have to do with the kids. Exactly. I, I don't live that exciting of a, of a life. Me either. It's fine. I but actually think you live a pretty exciting life, but do I? it's another podcast for another day. Right. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about it somewhere, <laughs> sometime. <laughs> um, I know you're really excited about today's stuff. I am so excited. So why don't you tell them what we're talking about? Okay, guys. So today we are talking about one of my favorite films by one of my favorite authors. Um, it was originally a novel. So today we are talking about an adaptation of one of my favorite films by one of my favorite authors. We are going all the way to Derry, Maine. Oh, Lord. <laughs> and we are talking about Stephen King's It. Hiya, Georgie. That's, That's how he sounded to you? Yeah. Well, I mean, the new one. He was like, hiya, Georgie. Kiss me, fat boy. <laughs> so many great sound bites from, from that. This, yeah, from this film. And um, I know we're going to touch on the uh, remake today because we have to. But primarily when I'm discussing it, I'm going to refer to the 1990 TV um, miniseries yeah. because that is the movie for me. Nothing against the remake. I think it was very mm -hmm. well done. Mm -hmm. But I also um, don't find anything wrong with the original. Okay. So I didn't need. So. <laughs> you found things wrong. So, there's okay. so many things wrong with the miniseries. So, and when wait, I talk. Wait, no, no, no. Wait, when I talk, wait. I'm going to talk about the new, the new two. That's fine. So you can do whatever just so you want. So the viewers know when you're talking, yeah. you're talking about the original miniseries. Yes. I'm talking about the two movies. Okay, that's fine. We Boom. can do we can do it like that because I also want to point out that these problems that he claims to have with the original, I think they were addressed in the it documentary that was just released. Like you have mm -hmm. to remember that this was a TV film, and so there's only so much that you can do. Yeah. And they kept getting so much pushback um, from the network. So it's you know there's only so much that you can do. Also on TV um, and in 1990. Yes. Because they shot it late 80s. Exactly. And then also something that you have to keep in mind anytime you're doing an adaptation um, and someone has actually interacted with the novel, mm -hmm. it's never going to meet their expectations no. um, because you just can't, especially with someone like St Stephen King, who's just like an amazing what? Remember when I lied and I said I read the book? <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, but with Stephen King, who's just so great at being descriptive enough. But too then, no, I, I wouldn't say too. I say he's descriptive enough. It takes but me then out you, of the story. you still, there's still room for imagination. So it's like the way I envisioned things, um, no one else is envisioning them the way I'm doing it. That's so, fair. you know, there's some leeway there. So I'm not going to be as harsh, but I, I personally, um, Seeing it as a child, I think it was horrifying. Yeah. I think it served its purpose, and I have no problems with it. So right. that's, like I said, that's the one I'm going to acknowledge. Now, before we get into this, mm -hmm. do you want me to expose to everyone watching yeah, your lie moment? I, I lie. So Frank's a liar, y'all. <laughs> He's is just is. out here lying to lie, telling lies that don't even need it to be told. It was like when we first met, and I wanted to like impress you. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm a reader, and he told me he was a reader too i am a reader and he mentioned in passing that he had never read stephen king's it no and i was like what that's crazy how could you not have read that and we love horror we love reading and so i was out of the kindness of my heart oh God. i loaned him my my copy of stephen king's it mm -hmm. And I was so excited to talk to him about this because when I first read it, I was like horrified. And I, I remember I had to impose a rule that once the sun went down, I had to stop reading for the day and kind of give myself time to get out, you know, get it out of my head what a because, because I would go to sleep like horrified. Who does that? Me. So I'm like, I have to, you know, I have to have some time to mm -hmm. get these horrifying things out of my head before I go to sleep. So I was so excited to talk to him about this. And then... You know, 
I, I let some time go because everybody's not a fast reader. I read it rather quickly. You read really like ridiculous. Yeah, yeah fast. I read it in like a day. She read like that. That book is huge. Yeah, it's over a thousand pages. And to read like I don't know, I read slow. <laughs> it's the ADHD. Get away from me! I don't remember what I read. I got to go back. Anyway, so I gave him suffi- what I thought was sufficient time to read this book, and then I asked him. I checked in. I didn't check in while he had the time. I waited until the time passed. Yeah. And I checked in, and this man had the audacity to say that he finished it. So now I was ready to talk about it. And when we were talking about it, I noticed his responses <laughs> were a little vague. Very vague. So I was like, okay. And I was like, that one scene was crazy, huh? And anyone who has read the book. I know now. No, so yeah, yeah, he anyone. knows now. But anyone who has read the book, when you say, that one scene was crazy, I'm not sure I understand why it was in here. Yeah. And when I said that, he was like, oh, yeah, that was crazy. And I, that's when I knew he didn't. He didn't read it. No. And I called him out. I didn't even let it slide no. like I probably should have. No, um, you were right. But I called him out. Immediately. I called him out. I was like, out. you didn't read this. Because, I mean, if you read a book and there's a scene about some some 11, 12-year-old kids having an orgy, yeah, that would stand out yeah. to you. More than anything in that book. And it didn't stand out to him. And so that's when I knew one of two things. Either I should have just he was it. He was, you know, into the into some things as a child that I didn't know about. Or he hadn't read the book. And so I came to the the second. Did you just accuse me of? (laughs) I was a late bloomer. I was also a late bloomer. Love that for us. How are you a late bloomer? I thought we were talking about sexual blooming. No. That was super late for both of us. (laughs) Yes. but You meant like a a puberty? A puberty bloom. Back to the film. So in my version of it, uh, it was directed by Tommy Lee Wallace. Yes. Who is also um, responsible for t- two of my favorite movies um, for uh, Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Severely underrated. Yes, I agree. And then Fright Night 2. Also so, underrated. Thank you. I think today's going to be a good day because we're in agreement a lot. For now. We'll see. Anyway, as we discussed, <laughs> it is it's an gonna adaptation. because you like the old one better. I mean, okay, so I guess my I think it's thing, a nostalgia thing. I think it's only because you saw that first. I don't know. I mean, okay, so let's get into this since we're here. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's a nostalgia thing. I think that it is just... You think it's superior? I do. <laughs> okay. I do because... And, and, uh, two words. Go downhill. Two words, though. Two words. Tim Curry. Exactly. Mm. I mean, I just think that he was a creepier it. I don't. You think you think the new one was creepier? Yeah. I think the new one was funny. I think N- nothing about Tim Curry made me laugh. I had laughing moments in this remake. I don't know. I watched the 1990 miniseries as an adult for the first time. Mm-hmm. Like that was the first time I saw it because mm. it just didn't look good to me. Mm. And so I appreciate what they did for the time, but like watching and like it's clearly like claymation when he's coming out of the thing <laughs> and like. Okay, and you think it was realistic when he like did that? open the mouth thing that looks realistic to you it looked more realistic than claymation claymation was cool but it's a kid's imagination so it's it's you know that's how you're justifying bad special effects it was the 90s and it was a tv movie and if they couldn't do it right they shouldn't have made it i thought it looked fine so really that spider looked fine so the spider is a problem for people worldwide exactly (laughs) and i'm not going to address the spider in my recap (laughs) I'll be addressing it. Don't worry. I got you guys. I will not be addressing I also do want to admit, and I would love to know if this is the same for you with the remake. Yeah. So for me, part one is superior, and I only rarely go into part two after watching part one. How do you feel? With the remake? Yes. So with the remake, I look at it as a complete story mm-hmm. where everything is a little bit more cohesive, and I believe the adult portion, and I like that they had things in the book that wasn't in the miniseries. Very true. Um, so that I really liked, and I, I think... When I watch the new one, I don't watch it solo. I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. this is like a three hour movie, and I'm watching mm-hmm. part one and part two. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't do that with the miniseries. I never, ever watch the adult portion. See, and and that's the funny thing to to me because the adult portion of the miniseries mm-hmm. had phenomenal adult actors for the time. I mean, everybody's a phenomenal actor for their time. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I don't think like if. Everything was trained. Like, if it was literally the same thing, but just made now, like, if we take the script and make the same thing, it wouldn't... I think it would still be good if we had great act... I, what I'm saying what, is great that... great TV actors? That's all they were. 
why are you acting like that's a bad thing? It's not a, a bad TV thing, actor. but and like this might be a hot take, but I feel like the the level of like depth that an actor has to take is very different for a film as opposed to a TV show. Sometimes I feel like it requires a lot more of them creatively. Sometimes because when you're doing TV, I feel like it's a little bit like, restricted on what they can do and like how how much emotion and how far they can go because it is for a mass audience on television. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna That's disagree. Changed a little with yeah, streaming, I'm, but I don't know. I we're different on this. We're yeah. different on this because I think it's the other way around. Because I but feel tell like me, tell me this. You thing. didn't even let me finish I'm not my thought. Let you finish. Nah, nah, I'm gonna finish it. Because you I'm always do this. To me. Ah. So what happened was. Um, Give me my damn mic. So if that's accurate, oh my God. tell Hurry me up. why Hurry up, Dan. when a TV leading actor takes a movie leading role, it kind of falls flat sometimes. Okay, so can I finish my what I was going to say? Sure. Because this might answer your dumbass question. <laughs> <laughs> so I was saying that it's more difficult because for a TV actor, mm-hmm. you are living in this yeah. for six months at a time. Well, I don't know how different shows film, so let me not put a timeline on it, but let me just say that you're living th- with this character for seasons. Yeah. Like, you have to stick with this character. You have to essentially bring this character to life to the point where people... So let me ask you this. I'm going to play a little game. Okay. Let me ask you this. When you watch The Office, do you feel like those are real people and that you would love to work at Dunder Mifflin? That's different. It's not different. I'm telling you, that to me is what makes it more difficult because you have to create no, it's not. something lasting when, over time. When, whereas the no, movie, no, 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 no. you know this is gonna be a little, no, you no, know, no, no, ninety no, no. minutes, maybe two hours. So and this that's why it's more difficult. Because you have a limited amount of time, ninety minutes, hundred twenty minutes, hundred eighty minutes, whatever, however long your movie is, you have that amount of time to create your character with the scenes that you have in that movie, right? There's and some rewrites, whatever, but when you're doing a show of seven, eight, nine seasons, the actor is acting in the moment for where the character is right then and there. And they're adjusting in the moment. They're not thinking about, oh, well, four seasons from now, because that's up to the writers to determine what arc that character is going to go on. When you have a movie, you exactly, have the and full they're arc, constantly adjusting. But that's, I feel like it's they're constantly adjusting. But it's in, in the moment, in the episode. They're constantly, kind of deal. anyway. So he acting bad today. So we'll get back to, like I was saying. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the 1990s miniseries. What do you think is wrong with it? Let's just, I'm going to just jump in. I'm going to go out of order today because you just (laughs) seem to think, you just seem to think there's just so much wrong with this movie. So what's wrong with it, friend? I don't know. There's, I'm going to say, I'll give it the kudos where it's deserved. The child portion is perfection. Exactly. It's really good. Exactly. Seth Green was in there. Yes. Love him. Yes. Dr. Evil's son. We love that. Yes. Yeah, so, what, again, what was wrong? Nothing. Because you, you, you keep talking about the great aspects of the film. I don't think... Okay. <laughs> I'm always very hesitant to say this. Okay. What you going to say? I don't think that Tim Curry was that good. That's ridiculous. That is a false statement. If I ever heard it's one, it's an opinion. It's not. A, it's a it's false statement. A it's not a fact. It, the fact is, he was phenomenal. He was okay. What? Yeah, like his look was boring and cheesy to me. What? Like I'm not saying he's not a great actor because he's one of the greatest ever. But I don't understand. The Are you whole, kidding like, me? He's terrifying. I'm scared of he clowns was because horrifying. of horrifying. Oh my gosh, I'm just thinking now of all this. Just first of all, just that makeup, and he Lame. was just so, just he was so mean to these kids and did it with a smile. Like that already in and of itself is just like, oh my gosh. And then when he would, there's the scene in the sewer when he has Stan and uh, Eddie Casbrack goes up and this is battery acid and he sprays him and he does that. The thing and like the teeth open up. Yeah. You can't tell me that wasn't horrifying. The eyes turned yellow, like Okay, but that's contacts and fake teeth. And I'm I'm sorry, do you think in the new it he walked on set looking like that? For the most part, yeah. And he could do that smile and make one of his eyes go crazy. We're gonna have to disagree here. That's fine. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. It's allowed. Mm-hmm. But Again, I think I would love to hear what other people think as well in the comments. Yeah, which Pennywise do you yeah, think better? Yeah, which Pennywise and why? is superior. And if you say anything other than Tim Curry, I'm going to delete it. 
It's rigged. <laughs> Just send me a DM. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I won't do that because I re- I really am interested. And I'm wondering if it's going to be a situation of um, I think it's gen- be, generational, yeah, generational di- yeah, thing. Yeah, because growing up in Chicago, in early our 40s, clown looked similar. <laughs> people in their early 40s are probably going to love Tim Curry. Anyway, our Bozo are. the Clown, <laughs> our Bozo the Clown growing up in Chicago kind of looked like Tim Curry. So I feel like it has to do with that. Like, this is the clown. This is what the clown looked like that I yeah, saw. We didn't have no damn clowns growing up. We had clowns. Y- Y'all did. You didn't go to no party where no clowns Hell showed up? Hell no. Y'all didn't have clowns? No. No, You never saw a clown? No. <laughs> I don't know why that's weird. <laughs> I've you never, seen never a saw a clown so growing up. I have no up. reason to be scared Time of Time out. We got to come back to this. What? You never saw a clown. No. At all. Ever. You never went to a party and there was a clown? No. You never went to a circus and saw a clown? No. You ain't go to McDonald's and see Ronald sitting on the bench? That don't count. He a clown? That don't count. <laughs> That's Ronald McDonald. A clown? Nah. Him and the Hamburglar. We ain't talking about the Hamburglar. But they're like a whole little squad, so it's not like one <laughs> clown. Like he was just a character Do you know what group. a clown looks like? Yeah. How would you know if you hadn't seen one? Not in real life. I didn't say I have, like, what, am I blind? <laughs> I know what a clown looks like. But you've never seen a clown in real life? No. What did the clowns look like when you were a kid that you were seeing not in real life? Ronald fucking McDonald. That's it. <laughs> That's the only clown That's you saw? That's the only damn clown. I don't know why you think clowns just be walking around the streets and say, hey, kids. Like, no one <laughs> is that, like, in the clown unit. Like, they don't have clown university. <laughs> Like they, where they're they learning to be do. clowns, like okay, but the, but the thing is, like you clowns come to birthday parties and stuff in the seventies, in the nineties too, friend. No, I went to parties where there were clowns. I'm sorry for you. That was a boring party. The clown was lit. Mm. He made us stuff. He was a hood clown. He was. That's why he's lit. <laughs> but also, the <laughs> the clown, Tommy the clown. Like you've never heard of him? No. <laughs> you don't know any. Why clowns? are you trying to make me a clown connoisseur? I just think it's weird that you never went to a party growing up in the nineties where there was a clown. And everyone's just like, Woo, a clown. Yeah, we were so super excited. Like by then, why was the why were the Power Rangers not showing up if this was a party in the nineties? Like no one gave a shit about clowns. People did still like clowns. Maybe if you lived in the middle of nowhere. Anyway, so you went to a party and the Power Rangers were there? Yeah. We went to a party and the Power Rangers were at the party. I mean not the real ones, <laughs> but they was dressed as mm-hmm. Tommy. But they looking like them little pinatas that be hanging out outside sometimes the they store were where off. they look a little. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they were off. Something's off mm-hmm. about them. Eyes ain't right. Yeah. Helmets too big. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So okay, but the cl- I want to tell you the clowns that came to my party. The makeup was top notch. Well, I feel like they have to be. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> went on this long tangent because I'm just so shocked that you've never seen a clown in real life. Um, that's crazy to me. I'm going to have to get you a clown for your next birthday Why party. Why would I want that? Just so you can experience it because they're actually really fun. I'm not five. It's okay. What is he going to do? Make a stuffed, like a little balloon thing? Like, I don't want that. They do tricks and stuff too. Oh, wow. What? They honk their nose? Why are you hating on clowns? Like, no one wants that. They tell jokes and <laughs> yeah, do funny stuff. and they stunts. got like ridiculously oversized shoes that they'll probably trip with or kick me. I'm, I'm going to have to come back to this. You never went to a circus? Where? I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. You think we had a circus there? You know what? We have rodeo. <laughs> they ain't got no rodeo clown? Nah. <laughs> what they have? Cowboys. And they just cowboy it up? Yeah. Ride the bulls, ride the horses, the kids I get I find it hard to it. believe that a, a circus didn't come to Tucson. I mean, maybe they did, but we didn't go. And, and I know one definitely came to Phoenix. Y'all could have drove. No, we didn't go nowhere. <laughs> our family vacation was going to a hotel in our same city. We did that too when we lived in the Illinois. Yeah. It was a fantastic vacation. Yeah. Wonderful staycation But vibes. we didn't go nowhere. But I did go to the, I did go to a few circuses as a kid. That's so circus weird. <laughs> as a kid. Circus I. I went to a few circus I as a kid. Uh, so because of that, and the clowns looked very similar mm-hmm. to tim curry's pennywise i think maybe that's why yeah, but that's just a generalized clown, was... clown so let me tell you what the creepy thing about clowns is okay because yeah please tell me to... since you know so much and have so much experience with them and we're gonna segue to the movie clown because i love that movie you remember that movie oh my gosh with corbin blue or no that's a different one that was a no that was a short that yeah. we watched no remember this one the guy finds the i do remember the costume in the basement and, and it's a something... the skin of a demon yeah, yeah. Ooh, that was a good one mm-hmm. we will segue mm-hmm. to that mm-hmm. i love yes, that i love that go ahead sorry um, <laughs> The the appeal of clowns to children 
mm-hmm. right? Is it's friendly, it's inviting, they're colorful, mm-hmm. they do this kind of stuff. So the scary part comes in when it's something that inviting that can take you off guard exactly. and then turn and kill you. It's not You're proving my point. That's why that no. clown was so scary because but that can those be are the fun and a, friendly clowns that, that I know. And for, he was a fun or friendly. Like even in the beginning when he waved at that little girl at first, he's like, Hi. And she's excited because she's like, it's a clown. And then he just goes, and then that's when it's like, wait, yeah, what? His smile is supposed to go the other way. Yeah. So you're proving my point. No, I'm proving the point that anything that's comfortable to someone can okay. be turned on its time head. Out, time out. I'm calling a time out here and I'm jumping in. So you think that that clown in the remake looked inviting at any point? No, but that was the vibe. But, the, but what it's, you're I mean, actually disproving your theory that that was the better clown because you just said the whole point is for the clown. Why do to be I have inviting. to sound like that? Because it's how you sounded to me. The whole point, I'm sorry, the whole point <laughs> is for the clown to be inviting and happy, and then it's not. And then you just say, no, that clown wasn't inviting ever. My clown wasn't. Exactly. So that, again, is proving why Tim Curry was the better clown because he did look inviting. No, that was the easy way out. See how folks be backtracking? And nobody when, backtracking. When their stuff messes up. Hey, my shit didn't mess up. <laughs> I stand by what I said, and it works with my point. What's your point? That Tim Curry was cheesy and dated in that movie. I'm going to have to argue with you there, buddy. Uh, hold, hold on, bucko. Uh-huh. I think that you're saying that because when you saw it, it was dated. Yeah, I'm but not, when I, would, I when saw I it, it, it was current. <laughs> I mean, but you could still watch. Like, I obviously didn't see it when it came out. I was a year old, but I still saw it in childhood. It was a sleepover movie. It wasn't for me. Exorcist was a sleepover movie for me. No, I had to watch that alone. And then all the Friday the Thirteenth. That was sleepover. I mean, those were sleepover no movies one, too. No but one I'm comes saying, over for a sleepover and says, "Let's watch this three-hour miniseries." We actually did. Well, that's weird. And it was really fun. We made nachos and homemade rice crispy treats <sighs> as we watched. So sticky. Because we had a TV in the kitchen, so we could do everything from right there. I'm not mad at that. The TV sitting on a, one of the metal chairs, one metal fold ones, out. With yeah, the, the squares at the top. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. and we sat it on a little metal fold out chair. Oh my god. And we made our our nachos and our rice crispy treats, and we did it. It was a two. It was a two day thing, though. You're right. We mm-hmm. didn't go through the whole film yeah. that night. You remember when Titanic had two VHS things? I I did. I still have the box set of yeah, the two VHS. Yeah, that was crazy. It was cool. Anyways, continue. But yes. So what I'm saying is, it worked for a kid in the 90s. And especially, we have this urban legend. I don't know if any of you out there have heard of this urban legend. They haven't. <laughs> I can tell you right now. Homie the Clown in Chicago. He was apparently... <laughs> producer Chelsea is shaking her head. She's heard of Homie the Clown. That's gross. But Homie the Clown who was going around <laughs> killing... Apparently, like, kidnapping children from behind the school. And there was this, this did elementary... did it really happen, though? Or was well, it... listen to me because I have, I have to go into it now. Since you I've started, you since saw I... Homie the Clown? Yeah. Homie the Clown. So the rumor was in Chicago that this clown was going around and, like, kidnapping and killing children. Mm-hmm. And... The rumor came even closer to home because there was this elementary school where I grew up called Child's Elementary. And so there were these students at this elementary school saying, yeah, he lives behind our school and sometimes you can see him. And I remember we we used to walk. um, One of my cousins lived in the neighborhood that this school was in and we would walk past and we would always walk past really, really fast because we're like, homie the clown, (laughs) homie the clown is back there. And my cousin swears that one day she saw him like hanging out back there and so i grew up thinking that this was true that this was some local creepy man who was doing this maybe it was it's, just like a clown travel road well, no. they were coming home from parties well no so since apparently everyone had clowns has, where you yes. grow fantastic theory but incorrect so when i became an adult mm-hmm. and this was rather recent it was like maybe within the past four years mm-hmm. there was a documentary on urban legends because i'm obsessed with urban legends so actually if you guys want um in the comments send me your best urban legend so that i can look it up and explore it because i lo- i have so many books on um, urban legends we'll read it on, on here yeah the we'll read ones. them yeah we'll read the best ones live so please send them in because i'm a fanatic for urban legends but i came across this documentary on netflix a few years ago and they talked about urban legends, and one of them was Homie the Clown. Oh <laughs> yes. He made it. And there were um, these newspaper clippings um, included in the documentary of people talking about these sightings, and yet none of these sightings have ever been confirmed. Yeah. 
So he was he was behind a lot of people's schools. Yeah. But no one ever really saw Homie the Clown. So that's how urban legends work. I love a good urban. We need an episode on just urban legends. That's where we'll read these. Yeah. Because I can go to town on some urban legends. The black eyed kids. Like. Yeah. There's a lot. There's so many. I mean, I don't really have any that I can think of. You don't know any urban legends? I mean, the chupacabra, but like, what do you want from me? (laughs) (laughs) You know the hook. I mean, that's lame. That's, I feel like it's just the story. The bride in the, in the chest. Uh Uh-huh. You don't know the bride in the chest? No. Interesting. Maybe I need to teach you some urban legends. I withdraw from your class. I took this class once on mythology (laughs) and I thought it was going to be like, we learning about Zeus Mm -hmm. (laughs) and he was doing urban legends. It was the greatest, the greatest surprise of my life. That's weird. I was so happy. I was like, what? And it was like all urban legends and, and how they are, I guess, modern mythology. But would you consider it and its notoriety in the movie as like a living urban legend within that that little world that they've created for the children? A living urban legend? Yeah. I don't think so because it's just so well known and it's it's Stephen King and it's no, like I we mean, know like he created it. for those characters in that world, do they look at Pennywise oh, as an urban legend? I think so. I 100% think so Mm because they know oh i've caught myself mid thought i think that this is an example of cosmic horror Mm -hmm. for those unfamiliar with it uh cosmic horror is essentially knowing that there is this fear out there this horrible indescribable Mm -hmm. incomprehensible fear out there but you don't know what it is yeah and i think that's more so what it is what it is it's like they know that some shit is going on in dairy yeah they know that something horrible is happening they know that these kids are going missing they know that these adults are ignoring it well they're not ignoring it they're tranced they're but oblivious to them to, it. to the kids they're like they're Can ignoring you this that? like being a kid or a yeah. group of kids and knowing that no matter what happens or what's going on none of the adults will acknowledge it i mean that is horrifying. I mean, that, all me of this. Yeah, part. all of this is like a kid's worst nightmare. Especially, I remember in uh, my version, mm-hmm. um, there is a scene where Beverly is being like borderline sexually assaulted almost mm-hmm. by Henry Bowers, yeah. and the old man across the street is like looking at it and like he looks like he wants to intervene, but at the end of the day, he's he, like, he I'm going to go back in my house. Yeah, because they like everything about it is like, I don't really see this. If I don't acknowledge it, it's not happening. Exactly. And that was very common in the 50s. Yeah. Nobody talked about anything. No one, Everyone had a perfect life. Everyone mm-hmm. was the perfect working husband, the perfect housewife. Like, no one wanted to admit that anything was wrong. I also, though, too, briefly want to touch on this um, as having read the book. Mm-hmm. Something that the miniseries didn't touch on because it couldn't touch on it. And I'm not sure, um, I'm going to admit, I've only seen the remake once. Um, But something that the book touches on is that the reason these adults are so oblivious, um, like you said, because of the trance, but the reason Mm -hmm. that they're entranced is because it essentially created dairy. Yeah. Like it's, like he's in control of the entire town. It's giving one. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember if he like really created it. This this might be a stretch, but he definitely um, is influencing it heavily. Yeah. Like it probably was already there, and then he took it over and just is influencing it heavily. And now I'm actually thinking to myself after reading the book that it truly is cosmic horror because something that they don't touch on in the miniseries either is where it originates. And in the book, they talk about that, that he's from like some space and he Mm -hmm. was in some, the spider was in some battle with the turtle, but they're not really turtles. That's just the closest that we can imagine them with the, yes, with the human mind. So that truly is cosmic horror, that it's this horror from this world we don't know exists that can do unspeakable evil that we don't know can be done yeah and it's here Mm -hmm. and that's as much as i'm gonna say about that because there's another episode where i really really want to get into cosmic no that's really good and this ain't it really good really really good (laughs) but this is a fantastic example of cosmic horror (laughs) it really is and i think i think the thing that the mini series was missing that the the two movies really had were like like i said those scenes that they weren't able to do yeah um and then really being able to go there with the graphic nature of everything, you know, Absolutely. with the exception of the scene that's never going to be put to film ever. Yeah. Um, but having, like, I really like the Paul Bunyan scene. 
because that was a big deal for that character. Yeah. Um, I really like when, I don't remember whose head it was, but the, the head turned into like the spider and was crawling around. I thought you meant the head in the miniseries when it's in the fridge, Stan. When his when they're in the part two, when they're adults and they're partying and he's not there and they open the fridge and he's in there and just I can tell you right now, reading I don't remember them. anything from the second half of the miniseries. I have a the homework project thing, for you, Frank. The only <laughs> thing that I remember is the dinner scene because the a little eyeball. <laughs> that was gross. Mm-hmm. That was the so chicken, gross. Wasn't there a chicken and egg? Or something, little baby. It was chick. a bird. Yeah, yeah, it was a little like bird that. coming mm-hmm. out of the, uh, not the egg. It was coming out of the fortune, fortune cookie. cookie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. No. But I mean, but see, look at all these great scenes that you can pull from this movie. And I you pulled one scene <laughs> with three details. <laughs> all these great scenes that you can pull from this movie. Like, I mean, okay, but you can't lie though, Frank. When even in a, just like our daily conversation, well, well, we know I lie. You, you're right. I we've established this <laughs> that I'm a liar. Um, but you know that we quote. When we quote from it, it is never from the new it. We always quote the I don't quote the, the OG new it because you don't like it. You don't quote it because you have no quotes from it. That's not true. Quote now, go. What do you mean? A quote from the new it, go. Hiya, Georgie. Nah, uh. New You'll quote. float too. You'll float too. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I have some great. What's the homework? Your homework is to rewatch the damn movie. Ew. <laughs> I'll watch it with you. We'll make it fun. We'll make Rice Krispie Treats and nachos. Okay. (laughs) You'll do this? For the snacks. (laughs) We'll come back to this. Yes. (laughs) But yes, that's what I would like you to do. I would like you to rewatch the movie. I'm just telling you now in school I didn't turn my homework in. I'm letting you know. So this might not happen at all. I'm just letting you know right now that I ain't that kind of teacher that's going to not let you just not turn the homework in. That's fine. So the homework is getting done. I'll take the F. Nah. No, I'm showing up with the ingredients for the, ch- the snacks mm-hmm. since I've promised them. And we're going to watch the movie again. Okay. And I would like an honest opinion. I've been honest about it. Like, I don't hate <laughs> it. I'm like, I know I'm willing to watch it. Like, I have a good time watching it. I just don't understand this, like, I don't know, like cultural icon status that, that it has because it's not scary to me. That's crazy. It's very TV. It's nothing about it is scary to me. I disagree. I heavily disagree. I think it's an amazing performance by Tim, but I don't just know. said it was cheesy. It is cheesy because it came out in the nineties, but like it, that's the vibe of it, right? I think it's. I think he was horrifying to you because you saw it when I think. Five? I mean, I even have a, a Pennywise tattoo, and it's the Tim Curry Pennywise. I'll get the other one. <laughs> that's fine. I don't want that one. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine but i just want to point out that in the tattoo shops most of them are the tim curry one because it's easy to draw when the new one came out that's that's when i saw an uptick right when it was coming out but i just want to point out that the tim curry one is what now 24 years old if it came out in 90 no it's, it's not it's 34 30, 33 almost 34 yes, years old that one is 34 years old and his his clown is still around so i think that because it's cemented something. itself in the time but horrible movies don't cement themselves is what I'm trying to tell you. Horrible characters don't cement themselves. You know, not too many people remember. And I'm not saying that this is a horrible yes, you are. character because I think that these characters are cool. Okay. But very few people outside of the few of us who have seen it remember the Critters. Yeah. But I think they were great. Because you have to like be like, oh, yeah, you remember Critters? And then they're like, oh, yeah. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying. It's like that goes to show you that – you know I mean, he showed up and he, and like, he did the assignment about, no one talks about the miniseries for the shining exactly or even remembers that it was a mini got it now until you just said something yeah and stephen <laughs> king prefers that one he hates the movie yes i've never read that book so I've, that's one of the few king books i've actually read how many king books have you read two the shining and dr sleep so we're gonna i'm gonna segue right now and do some plugging for some Stephen King books that everyone needs to read. That's fair. So, if you haven't read it, give it a read. It's, you know, it's... It's a commitment. So maybe it is a commitment. if you don't want to read it, do the audiobook. It, yeah. It, yes. But it is a commitment. But it gives you so much more than either of the films. Although I will say that the remake is closer. Much closer. But it gives you so much more that's just impossible to, do to put in... Pages. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's impossible to turn it into a, a even a two-part film. So... Read that book. One that I read over the summer. So over the summer, I was looking for something to do. Because, mm-hmm. you know, 
I'm in academia. So during the semesters, I am just like, go, go, go. Mm-hmm. And then the summer comes and I'm like, what do I do with my life? Ah. Yeah. So I decided, you know, I haven't read in a while. I'm going to get back into reading. Two fantastic books that I read by Stephen King. Mm-hmm. Um, the Long Walk. It is not a horror. Okay. It's horrifying. It's shocking. It's Yeah, it's horrifying, but it's not a horror. Okay. Not a horror at all, but such an amazing book. And if I remember correctly, it is not his first book published, but it is the first book that he wrote. That he wrote. Okay. That's pretty cool. And it's fantastic. And then uh, one of his most recent books, I think it just came out either last year. We're in 2024 now, so I think it came out. Two years ago? Yes, two years ago. And it is called Fairy Tales. Mm. Not a horror. Mm-hmm. Fantasy. Oh. And It's giving, what was it, Dark Tower? Is it like that? That vibe. Yeah. And it's literally one of the best books I have ever read. I was so involved. It was very hard for me to parent at the same time yeah. because I just wanted to sit there and unbothered the and read this book. It's not possible. Yes. So it is amazing. Um, and then also, if you if you like a good short story, I'm always plugging everywhere I go, The Night Shift. Yeah. Fantastic book. Maybe but yes, I just want I just wanted to throw that out there since you said that you haven't read yeah. a lot of Stephen King, that I think those are a really great place to start. Right. If we didn't mention it, tell us in the comments something you think we should read by Stephen yes, King. Yes, exactly. Because I personally have read a lot of Stephen King, mm-hmm. but I haven't read all. Yeah. So I would love to hear what you guys think are his best. Yep. And I'm going to give him a read. I don't know about him. He's fake. I would <laughs> But I will... I will actually read them. She'll read them. I will, 100%. I, will absolutely. I just want to know what you think I should read. Frank Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what you think I should read, but I ain't going to read I ain't going to read nothing. I will really. I'll try. I like, I like kind of like books that are scary, but based in science. Mm-hmm. So Relic, one of my favorite books of all time. Relic is a good time. Um, I know you love Meg. I was just about to say Meg. Meg. Because the the movies are very like action spectacle. Like we're going to do a Hollywood blockbuster B movie kind of deal. And they they play into like the the kind of spectacle of everything. Come on, spectacle. But the the books, like it really goes into the, the like the scientific details of what the Mariana Trench is and what's living down there gives yeah, you yeah. backstory on like all of these real life things that existed long ago and then relic does the same thing it's very based in biology and in mutation and you know that kind of stuff and what it means as a person it's very metaphorical because i look at it as you know every human has that evil animal inside mm-hmm. of them that they're capable of reaching mm. but this person it's swapped for them. Love the it. main was this creature. Mm-hmm. And then the inner turmoil was the consciousness that they had. Yes, yes. I love that. Mm-hmm. Thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. We love to know that you read. Yes. Because you just told us you don't read that much. So we're happy to hear that you yes. read. It's very yes. specific. We're very, so I do have a question for you, though. Yeah. Because you were talking about this whole thing about, oh, TV actors versus film actors. Yes. So we're living in the 90s. Okay. They're making this miniseries. Okay. But instead of it being on, I think it was ABC, mm-hmm. they're going to put it in theaters. Who are the adults? Because I don't want to touch the kids. I think the kids are perfect. The kids don't need to be touched. I personally think that the adult actors that they had were phenomenal. But if you were going to put different actors in there, who would they have been? So Think 90s. You can't peel nobody from today. <laughs> ugh, I don't know. I think Beverly would have to be like Julia Roberts. Interesting. I think she'd give that that kind of vibe. Just give her red hair. <laughs> I think she could do it. Okay. She's really good. Okay. Um, fat boy. Um, I, Kiss me, fat boy. Exactly. Um, I think for him, because he was supposed to be very, very handsome, I'm going to have to give it to Brad Pitt. This I'm, cast sounds crazy. This is an all-star cast. <laughs> but it sounds crazy. Well, who else was there in the 90s? Like, really? Julia Roberts, George Clooney, Brad Pitt... Tom Cruise, like, I'm not going to pick a C-list actor from the 90s. <laughs> I didn't say they had to be C-list. I'm just saying the, that. Like, that's what they did in the new one. Like, they have James McAvoy. He was I forgot James McAvoy was he in He was it. one of the adults. Okay. I mean, I they see where Jessica you're going. I see, like, I see where you're going, but I don't know if I believe that Brad Pitt and, and Julia Roberts are just these friends. <laughs> 
Why? <laughs> they grew up and had different lives. None of them were connected. You're right. Adults. Okay, they weren't connected. Okay, go on. I'm sorry. So Ben is Brad Pitt. Beverly is Julia Roberts. Mm-hmm. Next. Um, who was like a nerdy dude from the 90s? I don't know. I'm not well versed in 90s. I, like, I feel like that was it. <laughs> <laughs> there were other actors from the 90s. Yeah, but none that I can think of that pop into my head. Okay, think of some 90s movies, friend. Longevity. Think of some 90s hits. Um, Nerdy guy. I mean, if he, because at this You may have to pull from TV. I won't do that. (laughs) Um, I think the nerdy kid or the one with the fake asthma. Yeah, I think I would give it to Jeff Goldblum. Because in the 90s, he wasn't Jeff Goldblum like that. He wasn't like so charismatic. He was still kind of reined in. And I think that would be really good. Okay, okay. Are these people even all in the same age range? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, we'll ignore that. And Jeff we'll, might be a little bit older. Yeah, but we'll ignore that for this. They were all looking the same in the 90s. Like look, look at Brad Pitt in Interview with the Vampire and then Jeff Goldblum in Jurassic Park. They look about the look same Brad age. Brad Pitt now, he looks great still. But go ahead and well, finish your casting. Um, who else is there? Yeah, I mean, there's the lucky seven and you've given us three. <laughs> oh, well, that's all you're getting from me. <laughs> So what I'm getting uh, is that the cast was perfect, <laughs> like I said, because he can't even think of nobody to replace them. No, and I rest in peace to this lovely comedic genius, but I didn't like John Ritter in there. I just felt like he didn't fit. I He was my favorite one. I know. But I just love John Ritter. I prefer I him in Bride of Chucky. We won't go there. I know we won't. <laughs> you don't we'll acknowledge anything past that three. movie. Uh-huh. <laughs> No thanks. So you wouldn't recast anybody? I would recast the bill. I didn't like the bill. Okay. I did he not the like the adult one. bill. Which one was the blonde one? Yeah. With the, the long ponytail that correct. made no sense. Yeah, correct. I didn't like him either. I did not like him. Um, Nothing against Like him as an actor, yeah, because yeah. I've seen him in other things and loved him. But I did not like him in that role. Yeah. I think everyone else was perfect. Um, but I did not like the bill. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know who I would have made Bill. Tom Cruise. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he would have done a movie like this. If um, it was a big budget. I mean, honestly, like all of them were like in the height of their kind of 90s stardom. Exactly. If we, and this is assuming that this is coming out between like 94 and 97. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like if it was a big enough, I mean, why not? Like, like I just used Interview with the Vampire. Like, why not? That had Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise, Antonio yeah. Banderas, and Kirsten Dunst. Yeah. So, like, so you would, who, who are you casting for Bill? Because I have my cast. Bill? I don't know. I don't like that character. So it's hard for me. It would have to be going against typecast. So this is who I would pick. I don't know if he would have done this movie, um, but I saw him in another horror movie and I thought he did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would have wanted Michael J. Fox. He is good. And he also breaks your rule because he was a TV actor and a movie actor. Boom. But that's because... Boom. Don't do that. (laughs) Boom. That doesn't break anything. <laughs> Boom. Because if you want to get technical, so did Johnny Depp. But you see that they never went back to TV. Boom. They didn't have to. Boom. It was beneath them. It wasn't beneath. We're going to stop this blasphemy here that somehow film is better than television. Because I just, I think no, that. No, 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 no. I that, think there are just not, different. That's not what I'm saying. They're different categories. mediums. Yeah, yeah. They're different mediums that require different things. Exactly. Some people excel doing one. Some people excel doing the other. And it is the very rare case of the Michael J. Foxes <laughs> and the Johnny Depps where they can do both. Yes. I mean, I guess I could agree with that. Um, you know, Michael J. Fox is Michael J. Fox because he has the power <laughs> to do both. You know yeah. what I mean? But see, once but his I career loved him was Bill, over, he went back to television. Yeah. But again... I would have liked him as Bill. I think he would have been a great Bill, but also I don't, those people were considerably older. Mm-hmm. I don't think he would have fit the cast when I think about age. No. <laughs> uh, maybe. No. He was like still doing Back to the Future and Family Ties around this time. Yeah, they could have aged him up. <laughs> I don't know. It couldn't have been Michael Just J. Give Fox. him like a little gray streak. <laughs> it's very rogue of him. I'm dead. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't know. I would have to go to IMDb and look at like hot actors of From the 90s, 90s or something something like that. But I do know that I never liked the bill. Even as a kid, I was not feeling the adult bill. It just wasn't right. So I just, I just didn't, I don't know. I, I just, think it was because, 
I felt like there was a lack of chemistry between between him and the other Ooh, actors. Oh, maybe our boy. Who? From X-Files. David? Maybe he could have been Bill. Yeah. I think he would have been a great Bill. But then that's like TV actor. It's a TV movie. What are you not understanding? <laughs> we said theatrical release. No, I just said recast. Well, then he's fine and I take all of my actors out because... <laughs> Your actors are already out. That's fine. <laughs> This is why I'm not a casting director. Clearly. But no, I think he would have been, I think he would have been great, Bill. He would have been really good. David Duchovny. Yes, he would have been a fantastic name. Bill. Took me a minute. Oh, I didn't know you didn't know. I would have said I it forgot. sooner. But he was one of those two. He tried to translate to movies. Remember Evolution? That was Love a good movie. movie. Yeah. It was him, the 7-Up Man, and Julian Moore. The 7-Up Man? What's his name? Orlando Jones, Something I like think. That, yeah. <laughs> Not the Seven Up Man. That's all I know him from outside a, of that movie. So my kid, I have to, I have to share this story since we're talking about that movie Evolution. Mm -hmm. So my kids are obsessed with Eight Legged Freaks, obsessed. and they love David Arquette, which so I'm much. thrilled about because I yeah, love I also movie. I also love the movie, and I also love David Arquette, so this works out yep. in my favor. Um, but they watch this movie all the time. When I say all the time, it's like, hey guys, we should have a movie night. Can it be Eight Legged Freaks? Like I've seen this movie, and Scarlett Johansson is also in it she as a is. teenager. Um, so they watch this movie all the time and I thought we needed a new movie because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm about tired of, yeah. of this movie. I'm tired of hearing it. And so I thought evolution was in the same vein. It definitely is. And that they would love it. No. And the kids were so mad that mm -hmm. I put this movie on and they were just like, I think nah. 12 to 14 <laughs> is the time for that one because it's a little bit more like slapstick, almost adult humor. Like at the end when they go up the alien's butt to blow it up, like <laughs> Or when, the, I mean, or when the alien the goes Freaks in the It's not a kid movie. <sighs> yeah, but Allie has a thing with bugs. Yeah, my daughter is really into insects. So the spider thing is on brand for her. She had a pet mealworm. That she lost. <laughs> and then we found him. <laughs> <laughs> Who keeps one mealworm? No, she had two. And Dave was the one. That we found. That, that, that we, well, yeah, yeah. That's good for Dave. And then over the summer, she found a roly-poly. Uh-huh. And he was the original Dave. Oh. And then she dropped him. Oh. And so she found another Dave, and it was Dave Jr. Okay. She dropped him, too. Oh, shit. And then we had Dave the third. We should just stop giving her pets. Then he died. He died, <laughs> or something happened to him. <laughs> and then she had a new one, and she called it, like, it was like... Dave Cyborg. It was like something weird yeah. like that. Like, it was just like another Dave. Yeah. Over the summer, we had like 15 Daves. Yeah. Because she kept losing these roly polies. <laughs> she would put them in cups. Yeah. And then like the, the cup would get like knocked over. I love that. Does anyone else's kids like still do that kind of stuff? Because I feel like kids don't go outside anymore. Oh, my kids are always outside yeah, digging yeah. around, finding something. I love that. And trying to bring it to me. That's really great. Keep it outside. It warms my heart. I hate. When they're just kids. Yeah. But I, I hate worms and Aaliyah is like really into worms right now. And she when she is. sees them, she wants to get close. So do I. They're just worms. What are they going to do? Poop on you? <laughs> I don't know. As a kid, I remember picking up worms yeah. and playing with worms and thinking worms were cool. But now as an adult, something about the way they wiggle their bodies just really bothers me. That's fair. I used to, um, when I would go to my grandma's house in San Jose, um, outside she would have a ridiculous amount of snails. Mm -hmm. And you know what we did. I know exactly what you did. They sizzled. I see. I've never done that. I could never bring myself to do that. I mean, it was fun. I just feel in, like, like in retrospect, it's very like oh, oh that fun. one thing that told people you were a psychopath. <laughs> but at the time, it was just like Ooh, it's funny. Well, I used to do the ant thing with the magnifying glass. We all did yeah. that. But who has a magnifying <laughs> but I also, glass anymore? Yeah, but I also hated ants. That's fair. They're with the annoying. fiery passion. Mm -hmm. Like I just hate when I see them. I'm like, you have to die. Yeah. That's You're fair. gone. I mean, there's millions of them, so we'll but, be okay. When we lived in Atlanta, there was an anthill in front of our house. You remember that? And yeah. I stepped on it one day on my way to the I house. Remember. And I had some sandals on and one bit my big toe and it itched for like two weeks. Yeah. It was the worst. Mm. Again, I hate ants. Sorry that happened to you. Yes. Maybe it should have, instead of being a giant spider, I think it should have been a giant ant. I don't think it should have been anything. Because I that was the one Let's thing. Let's get into this. That was the one thing that I really comfy. did not like. About, Sorry, I'm going through something. You're tangled. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You had one job on what here. What is happening? <laughs> Let's fix that. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll turn to. Yes, it's um, getting serious now. The one thing that I didn't like about the remake was that ending where he was like giant half spider, but then like the clown on top of the half. <laughs> like it just. They were trying because they know the spider wasn't it. They, but they. <sighs> <laughs> I would have preferred. For them to take some like creative freedom 
within the world that they've created Mm -hmm. and do something different. You know what I mean? Like have them all get separated, have them all have to travel through these tunnels and then re-experience what they did as a kid where they're seeing what their fears are, but their fears have changed because they're now adults. Okay. So you want some new fears. Yeah. Okay. It's funny. I was going to ask you this question and you maybe have kind of just answered it. Um, because going back briefly, because again, mm-hmm. I don't want to get into this too deep. The cosmic horror. Um, I, I, I don't know how you would put that into something physical. You can't. I think that when we saw the deadlights in the new one, that made sense. Mm-hmm. That worked for me mm-hmm. because it, you didn't. It didn't need to be anything other than the actor's reaction and us kind of seeing that inner turmoil that they're having, we don't need to see it. Yeah, but I guess my question is more so, how do you fight cosmic horror? You don't. Exactly. So how would they have ended this? If you were staying true to the notion of cosmic horror, how would you have ended this? Probably the same way that the first half did, where it's like you didn't really defeat it, but you found a way to postpone the inevitable. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that because, I mean, that's that's all we want. Yeah. To postpone it a little bit. And that's it. <laughs> and then that will leave it open for him to come back to have a whole new, like, this could be like an updated Cause he slept modern for like, dairy. Yeah, because he slept for like 30 years, right? Yeah, yeah, something like that. So, like, why not? That's something in the book, too. In, in the movie, they were very clear about he's coming back every 30 years or whatever. Yeah. But in the book, it was like, sometimes it's 17, sometimes it's, so it's like, wait. Whenever he's resting. I think that's even more, like... A, a, in tune with because the cosmic I, I horror think, vibe because it's like he coming but because when? these people weren't or these characters they weren't in it to I mean they said they were but I felt like their motivation was to save the rest of their lives I actually just did the math in my head he's coming back every 40 years that's even worse yeah you know what I mean because it's like if you deal with it when you're a kid and then you wait the 40 years and you're you know 52 whatever how whatever <laughs> age they want to make them you ain't gonna make it another 40 years most likely or you're going to be 90. <laughs> they actually talk about that in the movie for their reason. Because they they survive without going to face it. Yeah. And one of them says, if this damn thing comes back when I'm 70, like... I'm I, done. I can't do it then, yeah. but maybe I can do it now. So... But that's what I'm saying. But I like what you're saying. Like, just let it come back when you're 70 and... You don't have to deal with it. Just yeah. leave dairy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you, it's something that is incomprehensible, is unstoppable... So just stop it long enough for you to have a good life. I think there could even be a lesson because I was like saying, "Oh, I'm going to stop murder." No, yeah, <laughs> like you can't do that. But I think there's there could even be a very valuable lesson in that. Being look, you cannot control everything, but what you can control is how you're reacting. Yep. You know, like for example, that first one ended. They all left Derry, and they did really great things with their lives. With their lives. So it's like, look, we didn't stop it. But we beat we beat it because like yeah. you're not gonna stop every horrible thing from happening to you, but you can beat certain things. What I liked about it and too overcome was I felt like each adult character, in their own right, kind of represented different ways that people deal with trauma. Mm-hmm. Because the the black man stayed. Mike Hanlon. He he dealt with it head on. Or or Ray forget. from Sister Sister. You know what I mean? Like he knew. Yeah. And but oh no, I was going to comment on that. I'm glad you brought him up. I was going to say going back to this idea of the lesson of of being like, you know what? You you get you face this trauma, you deal with it and you move on. And I feel like the reason his life was so shitty compared to everyone else is because he did not he got move stuck. on. Yeah, he didn't move on. He, he, got, he stuck. got stuck. And I felt like it was a a really good example of pretty much everything not to do with your trauma, which is Absolutely. repress, ignore repeat the cycle you know what i mean because mm-hmm. beverly was always abused <laughs> poor woman i love when she finally fought back at yes. him and she th- she threw like i don't know what it was like some moisturizer or she something and it something. like clocks yep. him in the head and like the way his head like falls, falls back, back. Yeah, that was good <laughs> but i really i think i liked that and because it really added some realism to a very yeah. fantastical story no but i do agree with you i would have liked it much better if instead of killing it uh it was just like a you know what we're gonna put him back down there. yeah we're gonna send him back down and and when he comes back up the next lucky seven yeah will be ready to face their version of this trauma yeah 
And, and like maybe it's kind of like even a rite of passage thing in dairy. Like, you know, you beat this and then you you have what it takes to leave dairy yep. and do something and with be yourself. Because if yeah. you handled it, you can handle the world. Exactly. Boom. Okay, so stabs. Yes. How many stabs are you giving your it? You don't get to grade mine, only grade I'm your own. I'm grade both. <laughs> I've seen both. Well, grade your own. Also, do I say both weird? I don't think Because a do. lot of people say both, but I like both <laughs> with a W, both. That's weird. That's how I say it, both. I, I heard both, and I heard like how I said it, and yeah. then you started being weird about it. Both. So I don't know. Look, the tongue comes on both. <laughs> I've never thought about how you say it. It's fine. Um <laughs> Okay, so the 1990 miniseries, I'm going to give two stabs. Oh, better and, than I thought. Yeah, and then the, I think the newer ones, I'll give one and a half stabs. That's crazy. Um, so I'm going to give mine one stab because I acknowledge there were some problems, but they're so minuscule and you have to take into account that it is a miniseries. Yeah. So. That's why I got the rating that I gave it. Yeah, so one stab. I'm going to give the new one two stabs okay. um i just i don't know i just i'm very much so nev campbell here as sydney prescott you know don't fuck with the original it was fine okay <laughs> it wasn't fine it needed to be modernized it was fine yeah but you got to appreciate that it was introduced to a whole new audience a whole new generation for them to appreciate stephen king i i get what you're saying and i, I think that's very important because i again Stephen King is one of my favorite authors, mm -hmm. uh, and I think he's brilliant, and I, I do want as many people always to yep. interact with his material. Take us home, Franklin. Thanks, guys, <laughs> for joining us on another episode of Live or Die. Uh, like, subscribe, share, follow, DM, whatever you want to do, and make sure you comment all the things that we asked you to yes, please. so we can interact with you guys. Yes. We really want to. And I really want those urban legends. Yes, please. <laughs> Please. So until next time, I'm Frank. I'm LC or L'Oreal, whoever I want to be today. Ew. And this was another episode of Live or Die. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>